Okay, so last uh, class we looked at, uh, sorry, good morning everyone, so sorry for the inconvenience. Um, last class we looked at uh, the parables and we studied the parables in the light of uh, the kingdom of God to understand uh, kingdom culture, kingdom uh, lifestyle, kingdom living. Um, today we'll move on to uh, the next uh, chapter that we're talking about kingdom authority so if you could uh, please turn in your uh, pdf copies to, or if you have your books you can turn to page number 85 which is talking about uh, kingdom authority uh, any of you have any questions uh, regarding kingdom parables Lesson seven, anyone has any questions? Okay, if not, we'll um, move to chapter um, eight, Kingdom Authority. Um, so as we are part of the kingdom of God, God has uh, wasted his authority in our lives. So as believers, we need to learn uh, how to flow in that authority. We've been seeing this from chapter one, uh, where we've learned that, you know, God prepared a kingdom for his people. And, um, uh, you know, his, the kingdom that he prepared was for the saints. Uh, the kingdom that he prepared was for us, the church. And we saw that he, um, you know, he initiated this kingdom. He brought about this kingdom uh, when he created the world in the Garden of Eden, we see that when Adam and Eve, um, he created Adam and Eve, when God created Adam and Eve, he gave them uh, dominion and authority and power uh, to subdue uh, and to have dominion over the earth. Okay, so God has, uh, and we know that when Adam and Eve sinned, they lost that authority they gave that authority over to uh, Satan and um, uh, we know that when Jesus died on the cross he took back that authority and he gave us the keys of the kingdom which resembles the authority so we have been given authority we have power and Ephesians chapter 2 also says Ephesians chapter 2 verse 6 it says that we are seated you know, the right hand of God, which means in spiritually speaking, you know, uh, we've been seated um, uh, with Jesus, the right hand of the Father. We have been given authority over every powers of darkness, every evil force, of every dominion, everything that can subdue us, can um, every power of the evil one, we have been given authority and dominion over. But we need to know how to operate in kingdom authority, power and dominion. We see that when Jesus introduced the kingdom of God, he said the kingdom of God is here. Okay, that's how he introduced the kingdom of God. He said the kingdom of God is here. And he did so with demonstrations of power, authority and dominion. Okay, so uh, we see that even as he taught people about the kingdom of God and, and he taught the parables, he said the kingdom of heaven is like this. So when he taught about the kingdom of God, it also says that he went about healing sicknesses, diseases and casting out demons. So Matthew chapter 4 verses 23 to 24. Can somebody read that please? Matthew chapter 4 verses 23 to 24. Can somebody read that? And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease among the people. Then his name went throughout all Syria, and they brought to him all sick people who were afflicted with various diseases and torments, and those who were demon-possessed, epileptics and paralytics, and he healed them. Thank you, Rosalind. So here we see that when you know Jesus went about teaching the kingdom of God, he not only proclaimed 
about the coming of the kingdom of God. He never, he not only proclaimed that the kingdom of God is here, is at hand, is reachable, uh, but he also had demonstrations. He demonstrated kingdom authority by healing every sick, like you know, every sickness, as we see read uh, in Matthew four twenty three and twenty four and other scriptures uh, passages as well. Uh, he healed every sickness and disease, and he cast out demons. In Matthew chapter 12, verse 28, Jesus said, If I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. So Jesus is saying, uh, here is the evidence that I'm proclaiming to you the kingdom. And what is the evidence? that demons are being cast out, the powers of darkness has been destroyed uh, because of the work of the Holy Spirit. So this is the evidence that the kingdom of God is here. And what is the evidence that the kingdom of God is here? Jesus did it through signs, wonders, and miracles. Now, not only Jesus, but he also, you know, turned around to his disciples and he taught them to do the same thing. And we read this in Matthew chapter 10, uh, verse 1 and verses 7 and 8. So can somebody please read Matthew chapter 10, uh, verse 1 and verse 7 and verse 8, please. Matthew chapter 10, verse 1. And when he had called his 12 disciples to him, he gave them power over unclean spirits, to cast them out and to heal all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease. Verse 7 and 8. And as you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. Thank you. Uh, so here we see Jesus telling his disciples that he wants them to go and tell the people that the kingdom of God is at hand. That means it's near them, it's reachable, it's something that they can access. And he says, as you do, what else does he tell them? Does he just say, go and preach that the kingdom of God is at hand? What else does he tell them to do? To heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead. And cast out demons. Thank you, Rosalind. So he says, you know, um, uh, do this as a means of proclaiming the kingdom of God. Which means Jesus is saying, how do people really know that the kingdom of God is at hand or is near them or it's you know, they can access it or they can see it? It's true science, miracles and wonders. Okay, so not just preaching about the kingdom of God, but, uh, you know, also uh, demonstrating the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God comes not through only through words, but also in power, as uh, Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 20. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 20, Paul says, the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. So if we, you know, think that we are born again, then, you know, we are born again into the kingdom of God, into the kingdom of heaven. We are kingdom citizens, um, we don't belong to this earth. And as kingdom citizens, we not only think kingdom perspective, we don't only live kingdom lifestyle, we don't only imbibe the kingdom culture, but, you know, we also do what God has required of us uh, in terms of, uh, you know, not just enjoying his kingdom, but also, you know, uh, uh, the we have this privilege, but we have this responsibility to preach and proclaim the kingdom of God, and also to flow in mighty signs, miracles, and wonders. And we know this in the book of Acts as well, that in the early church, people walk in this power and uh, this authority, okay? Um, and we know that, you know, sometimes we might be thinking, can, can I do all of these signs, miracles, and wonders? Well, you know, as uh, uh, part of the kingdom of God, we are his, uh, with God, co heirs with Jesus Christ, and he has given us the power and the uh, authority. So we've already been given the power and the authority. We just have to uh, know the power and authority that we have, and we need to use uh, the authority that we have to extend God's kingdom here on 
uh, uh, then we see that you know uh, 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 in the book of Acts, the early church also walked in this power and authority. They did it the way Jesus taught them uh, to do, and so we see that even Paul went about, um, along with all the other apostles, the disciples, they went about proclaiming the kingdom of God in power. Okay, and uh, uh, we see that, uh, uh, you know, uh, like we saw earlier, the Lord Jesus has given the church the keys of the kingdom. That means he has given them the kingdom authority. The church has been given the authority or the keys of the kingdom of heaven to bind on earth what has been bound or declared in heaven and to release on earth what God has released um, in heaven heaven okay we read this in matthew chapter 16 verse 19 we've already looked at these references so when the king has vested his authority um, in his people then you know we carry this authority wherever we go so the kingdom of com uh, god comes with demonstration of kingdom authority and power not only when we preach and teach, but also, you know, when we do signs, miracles, and wonders, God's authority, God's power is just released through us. So Jesus intends for us to do the same thing in our day and in our uh, generation. He told his disciples in Matthew chapter 28, verse 19, I want you to go and make disciples of all nations, and I want you to teach them all that I have. Uh, thoughts. So what did uh, Jesus teach them? What is everything that Jesus uh, taught them? He says, you know, I want you to teach everything that I taught you, all that I taught you. So what did te uh, Jesus teach them? Uh, to go proclaiming the kingdom of God, to preach and teach the kingdom of God, and to heal the sick, to raise the dead, to cast out demons. That's what we uh, just read in Matthew chapter 10, verse 1 and verses uh, 7 and 8. So this is what he taught them. And he says, you know, I want you to go and um, uh, make disciples of all nations, and I want you to teach them all that I have taught you. So when if you're just preaching and teaching, we're just not doing everything that Jesus has taught us. But when we preach, teach, and uh, we you know uh, we demonstrate um, through uh, God's power, through signs, miracles, and wonders by healing the sick, raising the dead, casting out demons, you know, we are actually doing what Jesus has taught us to. So Jesus wants us to do the same thing. It was not just for Jesus. It was not just for his disciples and then the 70 elders that he, 70 people that he chose. And it was not just for the early church, but it is also the same mandate um, that we carry as uh, people in his uh, kingdom. Okay, so, uh, you know, he wants us to do the same thing. Um, in our day, as we preach the kingdom of God and we, as we bring the kingdom of God into our circumstances, into uh, our environment, he wants us to do it with the demonstration of kingdom authority and kingdom power. Okay, so what does God really want us to do and how do we do it? And, uh, you know, sometimes we can say, well, you know, uh, Jesus did it, that's fine, you know, because he was a son of God. The disciples did it because they were with Jesus. He gave them the authority. Um, and it's okay for the early church because, you know, they um, uh, Jesus again told them. He gave them the authority, the anointing. We can say that, but we can ask ourselves, but who am I? You know, um, and whenever we question ourselves, can I do it? Can I do signs, miracles, and wonders? Okay, maybe I can preach and teach now that, you know, I'm in my third year in um, Bible college, uh, certainly second year in Bible college, you know, I can preach and teach, but uh, who am I really? You know, I don't have the authority, but, you know, as people who are born again, and I'm sure all of us here in class are born again, you know, um, as we are born again, we are born again into the kingdom of God. We are heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus. And we know that this was God's original plan, you know, uh, to uh, uh, to let his saints to reign on the uh, earth, to, uh, you know, uh, bring his kingdom here on um, earth. And Matthew chapter 25, verse 34. Can somebody read that, please? Matthew chapter 25, verse 34. Anyone read Matthew chapter 25, verse 34? Then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, 
you blessed of the of my father inherit a kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world thank you roslyn so it was god's intent to have a kingdom that his people would inherit it and today as a child of god you know we read in romans chapter 8 verses uh, uh, 16 and 17 it says there that god has put his spirit into our hearts and therefore we are heirs of god and we are joined heirs with jesus so you and i are here in the kingdom of god you know um, we we have inherited the kingdom so the authority of the kingdom of god is flowing in and through our life kingdom authority is vested in each one of us the authority of god the king you know, the God most high, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, who rules um, uh, from generations to generations, the ancient of days, the one who lives in unapproachable light, the one who's awesome, mighty, omnipotent, omnipresent, the omniscient one, uh, the one who's sovereign, you know, he is the one who has given us the authority, okay? And his authority, the authority of that king, this great king, this mighty king is flowing through each one of us. Um, and uh, we are those people who have inherited his uh, kingdom. So, you know, the whole thing about studying the kingdom of God, I just want you all to realize, uh, you know, uh, who you are. It's very important for us to know who we are, uh, you know, what we have, uh, what we have been called out of, what we have been called into and you know where is what is our position where we are standing now and uh, you know what uh, uh, authority what uh, we have inherited as being a people who are in christ okay we've not just uh, you know in christ we've not just uh, 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 received forgiveness of sins we have not just received uh, uh, salvation we have not just received uh, the hope of eternal life but we have received much more than just that i mean that is what we just uh, see and sometimes satan blinds our eyes to what we have seen but if you if you're carefully following through um uh, you know, this this whole study about the kingdom of God, I, I don't know if you're excited, but, you know, for me teaching this again, it's just so exciting to, and, and just reminding myself again about, you know, who I am in Christ, what is my standing, what is my calling, uh, where I've been positioned to, and uh, not to limit myself. So it's time for us to rise up, to actually see uh, who we really are, and not to, you know, uh, uh, we some of us have been looking down on ourselves some of them some of us have been very timid some of us have been fearful of uh, you know stepping out into the supernatural into doing things for god but you know uh, just to know that uh, even as we're studying the series it's just to it brings such powerful uh, insights and um, uh, truths about who we are in Christ, where we stand, and you know what is the kingdom that we have inherited, and um, uh, you know what God has given to us, and how we can take hold of it, and how we can do uh, mighty things for His uh, kingdom because. Uh, the kingdom authority of God who is king is just flowing through uh, each one of us. So we no need to also know what we have inherited, what we have and what is flowing in and through us. Now, uh, for example, you know, um, uh, when a police, uh, police traffic policeman, you know, when he blows the whistle and signals you to stop, you know, you have to stop. Uh, why? Because, uh, you know, he's given, he's vested with the authority by the government, um, uh, you know, and so we need to uh, obey him. We need to stop. We need to, you know, uh, listen to what he's saying uh, uh, and um, answer him. So it's also in the spiritual realm, you know, we might not think too highly of ourselves. We might not to have a big name, uh, we might not have fame, we might not be these mighty preachers or, uh, you know, healers, uh, miracle workers and all of those things. But, you know, uh, in the 
but knowing that you know uh, the, the the kingdom authority has been vested in each one of us and that we are heirs of god and joint heirs with jesus and it's time for us to raise up our hand you know sometimes the policeman uh you know he sees a violation and he might just turn away he doesn't do anything about it and sadly um in our churches today you know many believers are like this policeman who you know um who see a violation of uh, a rule be broken or the law not being kept, but, uh, you know, they just turn away. They don't do anything about it. And, um, you know, um, uh, they just pretend like uh, nothing has happened. And we need to change that because we see things around us in our church, in, in our Christian organizations, and we just cannot uh, turn uh, you know, uh, uh, our eyes away, but we need to change that. Uh, we need to be a generation that says, you know, that I know I'm a part of the kingdom of God. I know that the almighty God has made me an heir and his kingdom authority is flowing through my life. And it's time for me to raise up my hand and uh, to stop of the devil uh, from what he's doing, um, whether it's, uh, you know, stop the devil what he's doing in your life or whether uh, to stop the devil what he's doing in your family, in your, in your finances, in your health, uh, in your church, uh, in your city, in your neighborhood, in your nation. So it's time for us as, uh, you know, people of the kingdom of God uh, to raise up uh, and to rise up to... Um, who God has called us to and to use the authority uh, that he has uh, given us. Now, why did God uh, invest his authority in us? You know, uh, simply because he wanted us to bring his kingdom into this world. And the reason, uh, you know, when he uh, created um, the, uh, the world, he created the garden and he put Adam and Eve there, you know, he gave them dominion to rule over the uh, earth and to, to subdue. Okay, uh, to subdue Satan, basically, because subdue is more like a military term. Uh, and, um, you know, uh, there was no other human being on the face of the earth to subdue other than uh, the evil ones. So uh, gave him the authority uh, to subdue and to have dominion of the earth. That means to bring about his kingdom into this world. And we know that this was God's original plan even before the foundations of this uh, world. Okay. Uh, and, you know, God will never do it for us. We need to do it. Okay, so he has given us the authority and power. He gave Adam and he, he expected them to do it. And God will not do it for us, but he has given us everything that we need for life and godliness. As his word says, he has given us the power and the authority. He has given us the uh, weapons uh, for warfare, like we studied uh, last semester. Uh, but it's time for us to do it. He looks up to us to do it. So the reason why we have the authority uh, is because of our position. Okay, we have positional uh, authority. And in the Bible, you know, positioning is very, very uh, important. Okay, if you want to receive blessing from God, it's important for you to position yourself at the right time, at the right place, uh, doing the right thing. Like you learned uh, last semester in fulfilling God's purpose for your life, you learned about uh, positioning, how important it is for you to position yourself. For example, you know, um, Elijah, when he was running away from King Ahab, God told him, go to the brook of share it and stay there and you know i will um uh dunzo food for you uh you know he said he'll send the ravens to um uh give him food now when the stream dried up uh god told him to go to zarephath um and you know he'll find a widow now if uh, elijah says no god i don't want to go to zarephath it's a town it's uh, it is a town of the wicked king Queen Jezebel, they could easily find me, you know, he would never have um, uh, received God's provision in the in the famine. He had to move from Cherith to Zarephath. So we see that, you know, every time we position ourselves right, we will experience God's uh, uh, provision, we will experience God's blessing, we will experience God's protection. Like we read in Psalm chapter 91, uh, he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. Uh, and we say no evil will befall them, no plague will come uh, near their tent. So when does no evil befall us, when does no uh, plague come near our tent is when we are 
you know, uh, in the shelter of the Most High, in the secret uh, place of the Most High. That means when we are intimate in our relationship, in our walk with God, you know, we position ourselves to receive God's uh, protection. Um, so, you know, in the same way, even as we position ourselves now, a our position is that we are children of God, uh, that we are heirs of God, we co heirs with Christ. So we are standing in that position. And because we are in that position, you know, we receive God's authority. So we have positional um, authority. And um, we read Ephesians chapter 4, verses, uh, Ephesians, sorry, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 4 and 6. Can somebody read that, please? Ephesians chapter 2, verses 4 to 6. Can somebody else read other than Rosalind? But God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ, by grace you have been saved, and raised, up us, raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Subhashi. So we as believers are seated in a position of high authority. And where is our uh, position? We are at the right hand of the Father. Okay, and everything is under our feet. That means every demonic work, every demonic spirit is underneath your feet. Can you say an amen to that? You know, and Paul said that the God of peace will soon crush Satan, you know, underneath your feet. So where is Satan? He is underneath our feet. And why is he there? Because of, uh, you know, Jesus has already won uh, uh, the victory on the cross. He's a defeated foe. And, uh, you know, as you are in Christ, you also are part of that uh, victory that, uh, you know, uh, Jesus um, uh, received for us on the cross. And hence, you know, um, every demonic work, every demonic spirit is underneath your feet. You don't have to be intimidated by them, overwhelmed, scared about them. But we need to know authority that Satan is under our um, feet. Now, you know, we have been given this position of high authority. Uh, we are seated at the right hand of the Father. This is uh, spiritually speaking. You know, uh, our authority is, uh, our position is that we are seated at the right hand of, father, of the Father along with Jesus. And, you know, it's a choice that you and I make. We can either be seated at the right hand of the Father and fall asleep um, peacefully happy that we have received salvation that you know we are going to heaven uh, one day or we can say God thank you for raising me up to such a position of authority that you know um, uh, you know uh, uh, knowing us as human beings we would not want to you know give anyone you know, our uh, place of position, thinking about it in the world, nobody, we would guard our position. You know, if you're in the topmost uh, uh, position, we don't want anyone else to take our position. But here we see God is so loving, um, you know, how he just thinks about us. You know, how much he's, what length, what depth he's gone to think about us, that he has given us the right hand. Uh, uh, you know, which was, uh, which is specifically for his son, but he's also given to everyone who uh, believe in him. So, you know, uh, knowing our uh, position, uh, we need to say, God, I'm willing to use the authority uh, that you have given me. Thank you for raising me up to such an authority. Um, you know, and I'm willing to use the authority uh, in the environment, in the place that you have placed me with. I'm willing to allow your kingdom authority to flow through my life, um, uh, you know, or you can choose to just, you know, sleep over uh, uh, what God has uh, blessed you with, or you can rise up to use uh, the authority what God has given to you to influence your life, to influence your family, to influence your neighbors, your city and your church and the citywide um, church. Okay, so God has vested so much kingdom authority in your life and in my life that it's time we rose up and exercised uh, that God-given uh, authority. Uh, now, the challenge you and I face is that we operate in two worlds. Okay, we are... We are part of uh, this world that we are living in, and we are also part 
of the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven. Okay, so in this natural world, when we face problems, um, you know, uh, we try to figure it out, you know, and we try to solve uh, uh, solve the problem. Yes, we need to address the issue. We need to ad address the problem uh, uh, in the uh, 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 and address the natural things that need to be done because we live in this world. But as people who know that kingdom authority that has been vested in our lives, we must also say, how can I exercise my God given? authority to address this problem or uh, this uh, situation uh, and that is the challenge yes when we face a situation a problem uh, because we're living in this world you know we uh, we kind of address it with the natural the natural things that need to be done but you know as people who belong to the kingdom of god we need to have a different kingdom perspective thinking um, uh, and you know we need to uh, say how can you know I who am a kingdom citizen you know having the kingdom authority that's vested in my life how can I exercise my God given authority to address this problem or um, situation so how can I bring kingdom authority uh, into this situation yes I need to address it in the natural I need to do something in the natural we definitely need to do it, but also remember that we are heirs of God, we're joint heirs with Jesus. Uh, the real, uh, uh, and this is real because you know everything in the natural is subject to the spiritual. So everything in the natural can, is subject to the spiritual. Everything in the natural can be uh, changed from the spiritual. So your problem can be changed. Uh, your the sicknesses can be healed demonic uh, works demonic oppression demonic strongholds can be stopped you know if you come through it from the spiritual into the natural okay but the challenge is for us to go beyond our reasoning that tells us uh, uh, and say that i'm going to handle this uh, you know by the spirit of god i'm going to handle this by kingdom authority that has been wasted rather than just you know thinking the natural mind logical mind of course we need to use our natural mind a logical mind but we need to come through uh, with the spiritual uh, into the natural because uh, you know problems can be changed supernaturally when we uh, we you know come through with that that perspective from the spiritual into the um, natural so as people of the kingdom of god you know we must be conscious and live out of the kingdom of God that is within us, uh, the authority and power and dominion that has been uh, vested in us. And we need to do this at all times, in all situations, okay? Now, uh, what do we have authority over or what are the realms of authority? Uh, now, for example, you know, we have just been looking at the example of the policeman. Uh, it would be very wrong if the traffic policeman came into my house and told me what I need to do in my house, what I shouldn't be doing in my house. Now, he can't do that because he does not have authority uh, to do that. Now, as a traffic police, his realm of authority is only on the street, on the road, uh, concerning the traffic. Uh, when he steps out of that realm, his authority does not function so only in that realm of uh, street or the you know or the road or, 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 or to handle traffic that is his area of authority and when he steps out of that realm his authority does not function and so similarly uh, the same is with uh, you and i we need to understand uh, you know our realm of authority that god has given us it is in that realm we can see the fruit of the kingdom of God flowing in and uh, through our lives. Okay, So first we need to understand that we have authority over every demonic work. What's the realms of um, authority that we have? You know, we need to understand that we have authority over every uh, demonic work. Uh, anything that Satan is doing uh, in our lives um, or in our church or in the Bible study or the family, uh, it might have come down from generations. 
you know, we have authority over, God has given us authority, we have that positional authority, and, uh, uh, you know, uh, if it's a demonic work, we have authority over it, okay? Uh, take, just take, for example, you know, if um, somebody in your church, you know, they come to you, some believer or somebody in your workplace, um, or somebody in your family come to you and say, you know, they've just been having bad dreams, nightmares, uh, and they are really scared, it's terrifying them. Um, so you can just say, you know, um, oh, that's, um, you know, that's sad to hear, but you can just tell them, okay, you know, uh, uh, you can pray or you can just keep the Bible underneath your pillow, <laughs> you know, you can, you can give them all of these uh, so-called silly tips, but, you know, uh, uh, but what if you say, okay, can I pray for you, you know, uh, and knowing that um, you have the kingdom authority and just, you know, declaring that kingdom authority that you have over every demonic work, where you stand, uh, where your position is, where you are seated, uh, and that Satan is underneath your feet, you can just pray, uh, uh, for that believer, you don't have to be scared of uh, Satan or his demonic attacks on you uh, because you're a child of God, you know, uh, and you have the authority. Uh, you stand in a greater position. You already stand in the point of victory. So you can pray for deliverance um, and, you know, um, and just believe that person is delivered in the name of Jesus. Now, what if that pers if the person gets delivered, uh, you know, the person is going to put their faith and trust in uh, Jesus. It's not going to take them hundred sermons or thousand sermons to convince them that, you know, the person of Jesus Christ is real. Just a single prayer by a believer who knows his authority, uh, uh, you know, that brought healing, that brought deliverance to the situation, uh, can change the eternal destiny of that uh, individual. And we know that even when Philip went to uh, Samaria, I think Acts chapter 8, you know, he uh, preached the gospel there and, uh, you know, he accompanied it with great signs, miracles and wonders. And there was great joy in the city and, you know, uh, people believed because of the signs, miracles and wonders they did and everybody you know, uh, were baptized and later on, you know, they were also baptized in the Holy uh, Spirit. Just imagine the whole city of Samaria just accepting because they saw mighty signs, miracles, uh, demonstration of God's power, which was attested uh, through uh, preaching and um, teaching. So, you know, um, it will just be wonderful if we just pray and this person is deli delivered, you know, uh, they will just experience the power of God and they will accept Jesus as their personal uh, Savior. So you and I also have the authority, uh, not only demonic forces, but also over the natural elements, over circumstances, over situations that concerns us in our world. Uh, things that are affecting us, our job, you know, our career, our family, um, our future, uh, things that relate to you, uh, you know, you have authority to dominate that. Uh, oftentimes, uh, you know, we all of these dominate our lives, our jobs can dominate our lives, our career can dominate our lives, our sickness can dominate our lives, situations, uh, past, uh, things that we're going in the uh, going through in the present, uh, family situations, people, uh, you know, seem to have taken a, a hold over us, uh, you know, seem to dominate our uh, lives. But, you know, um, we need to know that, you know, we have been given authority to dominate all of those situations. So you stand above all of those things. You don't, we don't allow these things to affect our lives and our situations uh, and pull us down. Uh, but, you know, we have the authority to uh, dominate that. So when you face storms in life, we need to be like Jesus. Uh, what did Jesus do when he faced the storm? He rebuked the storm. Thank you. He rebuked the storm and he spoke to the storm. Okay, He spoke to it and he uh, uh, rebuked the uh, storm. So, you know, we need to speak uh, to the storm. Uh, you know, Jesus didn't say, uh, Father, what do I do? 
you know, we're facing the storm. He just got up from his sleep and, you know, he just uh, uh, rebuked the storm. He just asked us, uh, uh, you know, uh, to be quiet and everything became quiet. So, you know, we need to speak to our situations in Jesus' name. We'll, we'll see how, uh, you know, how do we exercise our kingdom uh, authority. Now, one area we cannot exercise uh, our authority is in the area of other people's will. Okay, we can exercise authority over demons, demonic uh, situations, oppressions, uh, strongholds, uh, situations in life, storms in life. But there is one area that we cannot exercise our authority, and that is in the area of other people's uh, will. Okay, uh, we'll stop here. We'll go for our break, and uh, we'll come back uh, after the break. Okay, thank you all. I'll see you after the break.